This is Matthew Harrington with Dell Technologies. Today I'm going to cover one of Dell's newest offerings, the Dell Device Management Console. This web portal allows you to manage Dell peripheral devices, docks, displays, webcams, keyboards, anything with a firmware in it, you can manage from this particular portal. I'm not going to cover every single thing up here because I like to keep my videos to 10, 11 minutes at the most. A lot of the things up here are pretty self-explanatory, right? I mean, you know, your dashboard, for example, I don't need to cover that. What I want to cover is how to install the agents you need to make this work to get peripherals showing in this console and how to push out firmware policies to them. So <clears throat> under settings, a lot of this is self-explanatory, but I'm going to cover the orders. This is for your smart docs. If you place an order for smart docs and you answer it within 14 days and you basically give it an order number, the email address, they will automatically show up in the group that you assign, right? And this is just for the smart docs. So you have your groups. You can have as many groups as you want. They could be based on city, on building, on floor, on location, conference room. Workspaces are very similar. They get a little more granular that you could add groups to workspaces, right? But you could group things the way you want them, and then you can install firmwares on the devices in those particular groups. But to get PCs up here, and to get peripherals up here, like here's a smart dock right here, right? To get this information or these devices up here, you need to download and install these two pieces of software. The Dell Device Management Agent is what checks in with this particular portal. When you install the Dell Device Management Agent, it needs what's called a group token. The group token can be passed directly to this installer or you could actually define it inside of DHCP. So I could come into DHCP. You're not going to have beta. You're going to just be device.manage.dell.com. Since I work for Dell, I'm in basically a beta sandbox that you would not have access to. But I could create these options and then I create one for the group token and that is the group token where do you get the group token well you get the group token by coming to groups and let's say you wanted everything to go to the default policy group you would come here and you'd say copy group token what do they look like when they're copied they look like this we even give you the command line to install it by calling the Dell Device Management Agent. This actually works. Again, you would not use beta. You would just use Dell or device.manage.dell.com, right? And if you come back to deployments and I click on software details, look at that. We actually give you the command line right there. Or if you don't want to push out this particular installer, Let's say you have, I don't know, 40 different locations. You're a huge company, different buildings, different floors, things like that. You'd have to install this each time with a specific group token. It's a lot easier to use DHCP subnets, right? Because they're by floor, by building, by location, and then you could do it that way. But some companies, maybe for security reasons, don't want that. They don't want the server team to have to manage all this. So we give you the option of creating a package and pushing it out. Also under deployments, there is the Dell Display and Peripheral Manager. And again, we give you an example on how to install this. <clears throat> Why these are important. As I said, the Dell Device Management Agent is what checks in with this particular portal. It interprets instructions that have been sent to it. Example, if you had a deployment that said, I want you to update the firmware on a specific Dell display, <clears throat> DMA agent sees that, reads it, and then hands control over to the Dell display and peripheral manager. 
this has its own CLI. And anything in here, you can see here, I ran help and I have display and app, webcam, mice, pen, everything. I could get information about my doc, for example, or I could update the doc. So what happens is, is the DMA and DDPM are installed on target systems. The DMA communicates with the web portal. Any install instructions are interpreted and they're handed off to Dell Display and Peripheral Manager, which actually does the update. It can do it for docs, displays, everything. The doc is unique. The docs are actually Wi-Fi capable. And once they've been set up in the portal, you actually could push out a firmware to a smart dock, even if it's not plugged into a laptop. This particular portal, the device management console, does have a repository for the dock firmwares, and it could actually push it out to a dock via Wi-Fi when the dock is completely by itself, not plugged into anything. For everything else, the DMA agent interprets an incoming command, hands control over to Dell Display and Peripheral Manager, and this actually does the install. So under deployments, I could say peripheral firmware policies, and you can see what they look like. So here's a dock firmware. Here is a display firmware. I could click this. I could say test. We have all these different types of hardware that have firmwares that this portal can actually push out to or push instruction files to that Dell Display and Peripheral Manager actually executes, right? So if I wanted a display, I could pick a model. I could say there's the firmware. And then I could finish this off, and then I have a policy. I target a group. When my system wakes up, initiate device check-in happens, it comes in, it says, hey, look, I have a new policy right here because I'm in that particular group, and this policy is telling me I want to update a U3425WE display. It sends the instruction down. And then it hands control over to Dell Display and Peripheral Manager, which has its own CLI, as I showed you, and then it actually executes the update. So it's pretty slick stuff. It is really slick. And like I said, there's a lot you can do in here. I'm just giving you the basics on how to push out policies, how the orders work, you know, there's rules, you know, jobs, events, all kinds of different stuff. A lot of it is self-explanatory. Here's one that I want to show you under configuration policies. If I come here and I say edit policy, there's my home Wi-Fi settings right there. So, you know, you have to set this up, obviously, for your company, right? You could even do things like I blocked all USB ports on a dock. Let's say you're in a highly secure area in your company and you have docs that have multiple monitors and that's all you want people to use them for. They can't plug anything in. You have group policies that block it on the laptop and then you could block all the ports on the dock too. So you could do things like that, right? So you have your peripherals, you have your PCs, you have all the different groups. Each one has its own unique token. You can manipulate everything from DHCP if you want, right? You have all the, all the group tokens could be in here. Or you could push out the software with the actual group token in it. And then all the machines start showing up in the groups that you tell it to. So it's pretty slick stuff. One thing I was kind of curious about is what if your security team says, we're not going to let you do all of this in DHCP because we don't want to maintain it. What if new sites come online and we have to come in here and we have to do all this stuff? What if groups get deleted and moved around inside the Dell you know, web portal? We don't want to have to sit here and maintain all this. So you need to sit here and handle all that yourself, right? So I started thinking about that. I go, what if you had, you know, 20 different locations or 20 different groups, right? Under groups, you had 20 different buildings. You'd have to create 20 different installers, which is kind of a hassle. So on my next video, I'm going to show you how to pass the group token 
<clears throat> from Intune into your actual installer right there. Here's a group token that I run PowerShell. I have a subordinate PowerShell script that's inside of my Intune Win package, and I actually pass the group token into that. It installs the DMA agent and uses the group token. That way I could change this, and I don't have to create 20 or 25 or 30 unique installers. I could have one installer, and I could basically pass different commands to it. That will be on the next video. So hopefully this was helpful. And until next time, take care.